This, uh, this is the Xeriscape Demonstration Garden at Farmington, uh, the Farmington Ag Science Center with New Mexico State University. And the garden is somewhat unique uh, from other Xeriscape gardens in that it's split into four different sections and then each section is irrigated uh, differently. Now this is the high irrigation zone and of course most of the, the plants that we planted, this is the zone that, uh, that, that we almost had, uh, well maybe not 100% survival because uh, in some cases, plants that don't like a lot of water, like the yuccas, did not survive in this section. Uh, or the tree choya is not doing very, quite as well in this section because of too much water. But um, you can see uh, the plants are larger here, but not necessarily of better quality, but we get more growth with more water, 12 gallons of water per week. Here's the uh, California brickle bush, for example, which you've seen in the no irrigation zone. and. Uh, like I say, a little more bushy over here, but uh, as far as quality, not really much difference. The prairie coneflower is one that's native, particularly the east side of the state. And you can see very nice uh, flowers on it, uh, very distinct, uh, sometimes called Mexican hat. But it's the prairie coneflower. Yeah, here's uh, Maxim Maximilian sunflower once again, Helianthus maximiliana. Emiliani, and it's uh, and it's doing better as you can see over here in the high irrigation zone. But once again, this is a very late flowering plant, and in some cases in northern New Mexico, you may only see flowers on it for about a week before we get a freeze, and then they all drop off. So it's uh, requires a pretty long season. Here's one that I hadn't pointed out before. Uh, it's only it survives, I, I believe, in the low irrigation and the high irrigation zones. The squaw apple, and it's another. Uh, good shrub for the uh, for our particular environment here. It uh, puts on small white flowers earlier in the spring and then those will drop off and it produces some berries uh, also later on in the summer. We've got a butterfly bush back here, uh, Budlea davidii. As you can see this one receives a little bit more irrigation over here, 12 gallons of water. Uh, you can compare it to the one in the medium irrigation zone. This one has some more flowers on it. This is not really native to New Mexico, more of a uh, plant that you'd find in the, uh, in the northwest part of the country. But it has very beautiful uh, purple flowers, attracts butterflies, thus the name, the butterfly bush. And uh, sometimes you can come out here and see five or six uh, butterflies uh, on this plant. And it's a beautiful plant for our area, but it is considered a noxious weed in parts of the northwest because they get so much rain. And it, uh, and it can become weedy up in that part of the country. But it does quite well here under uh, limited irrigation. Now here's a plant that, uh, it's a very beautiful flower, uh, pretty common, popular uh, plant, the purple cone flower, Echinacea purpurea. And um, it does very well in the high irrigation zone, but, uh, but it does require uh, the higher amounts of irrigation. It doesn't survive in the, uh, or it doesn't do very well at least under uh, lower irrigation levels than this 12 gallons uh, per plant per week that we're giving this this particular specimen here. Yeah, here's, uh, well, we have the blanket flower over there, another very popular plant, it, and it's native to uh, northwest New Mexico and, and uh, probably the western United States, most of the western United States. Uh, Blanket flower, um, very pretty on the high plains. Uh, you'll see it growing along roadsides, uh, even in our area. And then another pen stem, and this one's a little atypical. Doesn't look like some of the other pen stems, but this is uh, the pine leaf pen stem, and it's very good for attracting uh, hummingbirds. Uh, they seem to really prefer this one over some of the other pen stems, even. Okay, this is lamb's ear. Uh, and you can see it, it's uh, dying in the center probably because of, of where the irrigation water is uh, being applied. We have a few different plants, uh, snow in summer, even the pen stem next to it, to the right of it, you can see the same thing happening there. It tends to die in the center and the perimeter will stay alive and it may be because the, the, uh, the point of irrigation is where it's, where it's dying. Okay, this is Oregon Mountain uh, Evening Primrose and this is uh, native to the southern part of the state. And it does seem to do quite well here but does require more irrigation than some of the other primroses. And it should be flowering shortly. There's a few flowers just now coming out, but it is a late flower. And that's what we try to uh, demonstrate here 
is that uh, many of these different plants have different flowering periods, so it's nice to uh, know which, what time of year these plants flower so you'll have color in your garden all year long. This one will be a, a late flower, so it might be one to consider if you want flowers later in the summer. The um, purple one in the background here the, the, is a, uh, the Russian sage, and it's not native to uh, the U.S. even, but it's a very popular landscape plant. You'll see it growing up here in the Farmington area at many businesses. You also see it down in Albuquerque. And it has become a very popular, although probably overused, uh, landscape plant in New Mexico. Okay, this is a, another plant that's very common in northern New Mexico, and that's the uh, Euphorbia myrsinitis, uh, the yellow Euphorbia. And you see it growing in um, all around Santa Fe area, around in Gallup. It's, it's pretty popular in, in, uh, in landscapes in northern New Mexico. Uh, it does put on some nice yellow flowers earlier in the, in the spring and, and uh, early summer, but uh, they're pretty much gone now. But yeah, this is the golden rain tree. It's very dynamic. It changes its characteristics throughout the year. It'll have these, these nice yellow flowers on it, and then uh, later on, it'll have these little reddish colored lantern seed pods. And then after that, the seed pods will tend to fall off and the, the leaves will turn kind of a reddish color and fall. And uh, that's why I like the plant. It changes its characteristics throughout the year. We found that in agricultural crops, uh, water deficits seem to hasten flowering or maturity. So, and the same looks to be true in, in the xeriscape plants. Uh, we've seen in the low irrigation, in the no irrigation areas, the, the fern bush was already in flower. Here it's receiving a little bit more water, so it hasn't flowered yet. So the actually having uh, more water kind of delays the flowering. Even though our high irrigation, we call it the high irrigation, keep in mind that these plants are only receiving 12 gallons of water per week. So in, in reality, it's not high irrigation, but for a xeric garden, we would consider uh, it to be receiving a little bit more water than some, many of these plants can survive without water, but given the water, they will use it. But they can survive with, with very limited amounts, less than 12 gallons of water. Compared to a regular garden, this high irrigation zone would still be considered xeric. In other words, uh, well, for example, it'll use about 20% of the water of a turf uh, Kentucky bluegrass lawn.